Planet Coaster is just about everything I could have asked for in a modern resurrection of the theme park sim genre, and then some. Its economic side is unchallenging, but a huge diversity of rides and attractions and a nearly absurd level of terrain, structure, and coaster customization options make for a very satisfying sandbox. Intuitive keyboard shortcuts give you fine control over every tiny detail in every square foot of your park. The array of possibilities available just from placing, repositioning, resizing, recoloring, and editing the stock models is gargantuan. And a seamless, responsive mod browser has set the community up to succeed at introducing even more diversity. The Coaster Editor may be the best example of Planet Coaster's spirit of freedom and experimentation. There are 28 distinct types of coaster to start with, from wooden behemoths to high-tech, hydraulically launched monstrosities, each with different behaviors and track restrictions. With full control over the slope, turn, and bank of the track, I could create just about any shape I could think of. Once tested, coasters get ratings for excitement, which is good, nausea, which is bad, and fear, which needs to be balanced. Planet Coaster gives you great tools for determining where these ratings are coming from, at least in theory. I could view a heat map that displays, track segment by track segment, which parts of my coaster were getting my guests pumped, and which ones were making them spew a deluxe caramel sundae onto unfortunate passers-by. The issue I kept running into was that some of my designs kept getting inexplicably low excitement ratings. Even if the excitement heat map said that more than half of my track had an excitement rating above 10, and I switched out the slow cable lift with a linear synchronous motor launch at great cost to minimize the time spent getting up the first hill, I'd often end up with excitement ratings below 1. Comparing these designs to the pre-made coasters, the significant difference seemed to be size. And it's kind of a bummer when a fantasy roller coaster game's algorithm punishes you just for going big. Of the available modes, I mostly played in Challenge, which is the closest to classic tycoon games in that you start with nothing and build a park brick by brick, but are beholden to loans and a budget and must spend cash to research things like new stores and rides. It isn't particularly difficult though, so I eventually hit a point of critical mass where my annual profits were nearly enough to tear everything down and build it all over again. When I zoomed in to see the people in my park up close, one of my biggest gripes was that the exact same character model is used for every staff member of a specific type. Janitors all look like the same Saturday morning cartoon caricature of a middle school custodian, and every mechanic is a cheerful Hispanic man with a pencil mustache, even if the roster says his or her name is Ambrose Faust. Since guests at a park appear in all manner of randomized appearances, it would have been nice to see the same tech applied to employees. Managing these underlings is also more complicated than it needs to be. While salaries, training levels, and work groups are all listed on the ledger, they can't be directly edited from there. You have to click on each individual staffer on the list and bring up a menu specific to them every time you want to give them a raise or assign them to a different area of the park. While it may not be an amazing capitalism simulator, Planet Coaster is a fantastic theme park building sandbox that rarely took an idea I had and told me, no, you can't do that. Its knobs and levers are various and potent enough to allow creativity on par with a Minecraft or a Second Life. And a big part of my excitement is seeing what other people are going to do with it, especially when you factor in the seamless Steam Workshop integration. If I were another prominent theme park game coming out this year, suffice to say I'd be pretty worried right now. For more on Planet Coaster, stick with IGN.